hello guys it's a brand new morning here and welcome to another new video from tricoder.com and today we're going to talk about something very exciting and fascinating and we're going to talk about how you can get started with Google Puppeteer Google Puppeteer I know this might be your first time getting about this but then it's it's something kind of fun and I'm sure you're going to enjoy that and so as you can see on my screen this is my page this is our website so if you're looking out for the written content of this video you can always check out our website tricoder.com and where you're going to find interesting tutorials or articles for other languages and frameworks and so as i mentioned today we're going to talk in, we're going to be talking about google puppeteer and so from the name you can already understand that it's a tool developed by google it's a tool developed by google but then we're going to do some introduction in this tutorial we, we're going to do some installation and we're going to check out how we can actually use this Google Puppeteer in our development, how useful it is. So once more, welcome. And as the name implies, Puppeteer, it's actually a node library. It's a node library which provides a high level API to control headless Chrome or Chromium. Basically, whenever you hear talk about headless Chrome, it surely means headless, meaning you can't actually see it. You can't actually see that opening and closing just like the normal browser you use in your computer. But then it can perform usual tasks or operations like other browsers and so Puppeteer is simply a node library which provides this API to control headless Chrome or Chromium therefore Puppeteer can actually do anything that can be done with a normal browser but different in the sense that you can't actually see it open or close you can actually see the browser physically in your computer so everything is done at the back and the results then forwarded to you so actually that's the meaning of headless chrome isn't it awesome and you might be wondering what can this actually do or what can be puppeteer actually do or how helpful it is as I mentioned earlier, Puppeteer can actually do anything that the browser does. As you can see, for example, submitting forms, typing, checking a website's mobile view. We equally have opening websites, generating screenshots, PDF, and much more. Puppeteer can, all, can equally be useful in perhaps let's say um, tracking and other tasks you can check them out on the official website but then in this tutorial we're going to cover some few and I guess this actually makes you very exciting or excited for this because you're actually going to see how this can be done headlessly I mean with headless Chrome. it's kind of automating the task and so to install this to install Puppeteer remember I as I mentioned earlier it is a node JS library or a kind of module therefore you actually need to install this like any other module in, in node JS and so let's write on to the npm page for Puppeteer to actually install this, you simply need to run the command npm install Puppeteer. 
but you should um, have a working internet connection to actually install this and mind you on Mac it has a different size and on Windows specifically because I'm using Windows it has a size of about 280 megabytes and so you actually need internet connection to be able to download this because Kupetia is an entire package on its own which is kind of useful and so obviously it is heavy and so you just need to be patient and after running the command Kupetia will get installed in your computer and so it's simply by typing npm i or npm install be actually mindful of the spelling npm i puppeteer and then you press enter but for my case i already got the the module installed in my local machine so no need doing that again but then when your installation is complete you can actually check out if puppeteer has actually been installed in your local computer by typing the code by checking out the version as you can see as of now i have version 12.0.18.4 installed in my local machine so let's get started writing some code If you would want any further explanation or any further inquiries on the installation, you can actually check out the the Pupeta webpage of npm. I mean on npmjs.com, or you can equally check out your official website, developers.google.com. Let's get started writing some code. now we are actually going to see how we can use puppeteer to actually generate pdf automatically and equally generate screenshot a screenshot so but it doesn't mean that these are all the usefulness of puppeteer there are many more can equally check that out I think on your on your page even here it's written you can test Chrome extensions you can capture timeline trace you can create an up-to-date automated testing environment you can automate form submission UI testing keyboard input you can crawl a single page application and generate pre-rendered content and equally Puppeteer is equally very powerful in the aspect of, of um, generating content, of getting content from another website and actually putting that or developing that on a site. Very important. It's actually called web scraping. So Puppeteer is very important for web scraping. It's very useful. So now we're going to look at how we can generate PDF, a PDF file, and a screenshot. So let's get started with PDF. And so to begin, we need to import our module. Actually, I would also want you to know that Puppeteer actually works with the asynchronous function, which equally, which, which where it makes use of, of the await promises and 
anything that has to do with the asynchronous function. And so when working with Google Puppeteer, you're actually going to come across the asynchronous function, the await, and equally promises. So you might actually have some errors handling promises and all that sort. So you just need to actually read about this and actually understand them. So we're going to begin by creating an asynchronous function, async. And in this function okay guys remember I made mention that Puppeteer is actually a headless browser remember from the introduction I said Puppeteer is actually the headless a headless browser therefore before performing any operations on Puppeteer you should think of a scenario where it works exactly like a normal web browser for example if i'm to automate a form submission using puppeteer i need to automate the task that will be that would be done by any user using a browser for example opening a website navigating to the form placing a pointer on, on the form and then type in the first field the second field the third field and probably submitting the form so all of these things ought to be automated in puppeteer and that's why it makes it very awesome and interesting so first to actually generate a, a pdf file first you need to create you need to launch a browser you actually need to launch a browser just like one would normally do with a normal browser with a normal computer you know open a browser navigate to a web page and then probably save and generate its pdf a pdf file from its contents so in this case we're actually going to to launch a browser await criteria.launch then we need to open a new page kind of a new tab Wait, which we're going to do that with, with a method browser dot new page then we we actually we're going to create our PDF file from the content of a website so basically we need to open the site so executing this we need to type a width they come with the method page dot go to And then this takes as parameter the URL. And so in our case, we're going to use and then we we'll finally use the command each dot PDF. And where we are going to pass as parameter 
actually the 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 method page.pdf can actually take as many parameters as possible you can actually check them out in the official website we here this is where we can actually configure how we want our our pdf file to look like do you want on a letter page or would you want it on an a4 would you want the background printed out would you want a particular size you can act you can actually check that check them out on the official website but for now let me just show you the basics h.pdf here we're going to get the path Oops. here we're going to get the path I'm going to store the file in a, in a folder known as uploads slash and I'm going to pass the name of the file as api.pdf and the format will be an, on an A4 and as you would usually do with a normal browser when the operation has been completed then you would close the browser so this can be achieved with the method browser.close guys it's a wonderful morning here and that's why you can get the birds singing and just having some good time browser.close And then, when everything has been set, we're going to cons we're going to log on our console. Console.log done. Now, this doesn't actually mean these are the only configurations that we could actually give to to this PDF file. There are others that we can actually check them out and and make use of them for example we have the print background well I'm going to check it out for now let's just run this as I show you the example Node server Oops, let's check out if there's an error somewhere In my uploads folder, there's actually nothing and so I think I should check that out again Node server Oh, we forgot adding our, our module here So I think that's it, it should work now Another error. Let's check it out. Oh, so to actually 
start the script since Puppeteer will actually need to open up a browser virtually or headlessly, headlessly and then navigate to a website and then generate a PDF content of this website. It is actually very important that you have an internet connection else that can't actually be possible just like in a normal scenario where a user opens up a browser navigates to a website and then checks the content oops we have an error i think we just need to restart this the script And finally it's done as you can see printed in the console done now let's actually check out the, the PDF generated and so as you can see in the upload folder we have a PDF file with the name API so I think let's check that out And as you can see, we have it here, the available articles generated in PDF. So you realize this is a very useful tool, very useful and important. But I think we can further configure Puppeteer to do something great with this. For example, I think we can we can set a viewport. Viewport could simply be the the size of the page, and so we can set this. I wait. the viewport where we're going to set the width I'm going to set in this case 1280 and the height the height I'm going to set the height of 800 so let's test that out Thing I just need to delete this and check it out again. Start. Clear our screen and then check that out. Actually, this the operation might actually take some seconds because Puppeteer actually needs to open up a browser, navigate to the page, and then generate a PDF. And so this might actually depend on the speed of your connection, your internet connection, and on many other factors. And finally, it's done. So let's check out our new PDF file. Is there any difference? I don't think so. Probably because we set our page.
because we set up our format to A4. What if we just say we could just say letter and try it out? And finally, it's done. So let's check it out again. Still no change. Probably because we use the wrong format. And so a handy tool or tip could be to actually check out the the API reference and so we navigate to page.pdf and so at page.pdf we have print background we have landscape so I think an option for this could have been landscape and then we set that to true landscape so and then we can take this away to actually widen our page And also guys, there may be times that Petio can actually throw an error where you would simply need to clear the screen and restart the server again. So that's a helpful tip which could actually be of help sometimes. And as you can see, you could always check out the API page, which is very helpful in checking out some options that could be passed along with page.pdf. And as you can see, we have print background. This is for a context where you would actually want to print all the colors and other stylish elements found at the background. This is super helpful too. And so next we are going to implement print background and which we are going to pass that to true. This is taking too long. Let's check out. It says done. Okay, guys, as you can see, the page has been widened. You can see the difference. The page has been widened. And so, these are some few params how you can actually customize your PDF file. And so, guys, this is a very handy tool. In terms of imagine you actually have to produce 
hundreds of files hundreds of PDF files and so this is a super helpful tool let's actually implement printing along with the background and let you quickly check out some helpful tool here it can help we have page margin okay I think let's just work with print background and let's see how it works save and then Oops, seems I rather deleted the file. And in our subsequent tutorials, you're going to actually figure out how you can actually automate form submission, how you can automate logging into a website getting your notification or how you can auto automate searching for a video on on YouTube and capturing its number of viewers or views how you can actually automate logging in perhaps your Gmail and then checking out your first email this is a very super helpful tool so this case is done let's check it out Of course, the colors have been printed out, as you can see. Okay guys, this is very helpful, really super helpful. And so you can check out the API reference page, the API page and you can actually read more on that and see how you could customize your your pdf file next we're going to look at how we can automate screenshots so i think i should delete this for now we're going to see how we could automate screenshots And we're going to go to the same procedure sequel to require always make sure you don't miss out the spelling and so we create our asynchronous function We launch our browser the steps are just the same as the previous and that is done through a wait material of launch it's actually a method next our page it's kind of like opening a new tab and so this can be achieved with await browser.new page dot new page and it's equally a method you could put the semicolons if you wish then I'm going to set a viewport Where, 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 where I'm going to set the, the width and the height 
so probably here yeah, this is where, where I'm going to set a width of 1280 and a height of 800 and then I would need to open a URL and then these steps are just the same as you these steps are actually similar as you can as you noticed in the previous example you might actually decide to set up uh, to add the semicolons i just want to see them without the semicolons now we 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 are, we are going to navigate to tricoder.com and then we're going to take a screenshot page dot screenshot and this takes similar params like the previous example or oh, let's just put this on we have the path where we can actually set up the path and the name of our screenshot so I would still be saving this in the uploads folder and precisely with the name screenshot and the extension dot png and then as usual there are other params where you could actually set up for example I wouldn't want to get the full page so I would set this to false and then at the end I close my browser I wait browser the close method and then if everything goes well I get a console.log on my console done so let's save and test that out an error oops we forgot adding this bracket so I think that's it And for taking screenshots would obviously may take some seconds due to the fact that oops we have an error but let's try out running the server again
and so as I was saying that this might actually take some time because it actually needs to work just as a normal browser open up a page and take the screenshot we still have an error I think let's try that out again And so it's done so let's check out our uploads folder and as you can see I think I should open that up in Chrome and as you can see we have a screenshot of the page this is super helpful as I said earlier, it could be used in a case where you want to take out the screenshot of the first email in your Gmail box. This can be helpful. And in other creative scenes that you might want to explore. So guys, let us equally check out the API page.screenshot, the options. And so it takes the path type so so the type you could set up the, the the type of image as you can see in this case we have a PNG image but you could set that up here for it to be a JPEG but by default it's PNG and here you could add the quality we have the quality as an option as a param the quality of the image between 0 to 100 but not applicable to PNG images guys I think we can try that out let's set up the type let's uh, type and let's use the JPEG and then we can set up the quality so the quality you could say let's put that to 60 and then let's check out we have clip the clip is actually a, a case where you would want to to clip or a screenshot or to get a screenshot of a particular area on the screen for example I might want to get just the number of views on my youtube channel so I may not actually need to get a screenshot of the entire page but just click out the specific area provided you could figure out the coordinates as you can see x coordinate on top left corner of clips area and y coordinate of top left corner of clip area and then you, you, you can get the width of clipping area, the height of clipping area. Guys, I think we can we could actually make out a tutorial on this. It is actually very helpful. And you equally have the encoding, the omit background height, default white background, and allows capturing screenshots with transparency. And the default is false. And we equally have encoding of the image which can be a base for or binary okay guys I think let's run what we got and see the changes made so let's delete this
Okay, now we have done. I think we can check this out. First, we had to set a screenshot. We had to set the, the type to JPEG. And so let's check out our extension. Oops, we still have a PNG file. Oh guys, I figured out the error. This is actually because we set our path and the name to .png extension. So actually, we actually had to change this to JPEG, and then, but then let's check out the size. It's 65 kilobyte. Um, let's change the quality to 100, and just try out something, you know. So let's delete this. And run the script again. And so it's done. Let's check out. We have a JPEG, and you can you could see the size of the file has increased to 185 kilobytes. So let's check out the image. It's now in a JPEG extension or format. Or we could just check it out from here. As you can see, this is the image. So guys, that is actually how we could we could set up puppeteer and use them for for other stuff, for screenshot, for PDF. And you can always feel free to check out their online documentation, which gives you a better understanding of the parameters and the options. And you can actually check out Puppeteer on, on GitHub. Where you could equally find their own example on the things we just did and guys watch out for the next tutorial we are going to see how we can automate form submission how we could actually emulate devices how we can hover um, how we could automate keyboard input how we could automate mouse click hover and other interesting stuff so stay tuned if you're new to this channel i would recommend you like subscribe and share and equally click on the notification bell so that whenever a new video has been uploaded you would be the first to know and guys permit me use this opportunity to, to actually show you again our website where you can get written content of our tutorials on node python and others and other languages or frameworks which are 
super helpful. And as you can see our Node.js page, we have interesting tutorials on Node, Express, MongoDB, which are very helpful. I would recommend you guys to check them out. They are actually super good and educative. And also, do not forget liking our YouTube videos, subscribe, and share. You can also find us on social media on Facebook. You can get our page and our group Tricoder, which is a forum where we share our content and where we get to interact with other developers you can always check that out and if you have any questions or doubts or worries about this video do not hesitate to share so drop them at the comment section and someone will actually reach you in the comment box and permit me equally use this opportunity to act to equally share out our services we actually offer web creation services websites mobile apps and other IT or tech services which you can always get to us and we are actually going to render you our services in an affordable and professional way you can see our magento services and we equally have others so if you want to build a website you can actually call us a website a web application e-commerce sites and many others you can always call on us and we are going to render that service to you and equally if you're watching this video and you feel interested in working with us you can always contact us and we are going to see how we could be of help to you if you actually wish to learn something in programming or development it could be web it could be a particular language or it could be to build something interesting you can always reach us we can train on web development mobile apps and train you in other languages and so if you equally want to do consultancy we are up and available for you before leaving, I think I should show you the Facebook group. As you can see, we have more than a thousand members. It's a forum of for developers, and so you can actually check it out. It's very helpful. Also, you can always check out our channel and subscribe. We have interesting tutorials soon we're going to be adding tutorials on react react native they are very helpful too and so guys thank you for watching and before my final goodbye a quick recap we actually talked about google operative and we saw instances how it is useful and we equally made mention of the fact that it is headless meaning you don't actually see a physical browser opening and doing all the work done but everything is headless and it happens at the background but you just see output and we looked at or we saw how we could create pdf files we could automate the creation of pdf files and capture screenshots and we equally said Puppeteer doesn't just limit the Puppeteer equally helps in web scraping web scraping is actually the ability to get data 
from another website and use it in your own personal website this can be done with node node and puppeteer it can be done with python and perhaps other languages or frameworks and we equally said puppeteer is useful not just in web scraping but in equally in ui testing equally in automating form submission in checking out a, 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 a web app or checking out something on a device for example testing out a web application or a website checking out how it looks like on a website in a mobile phone which is equally called device emulation and so we, we equally said Puppetia can equally help in tracing timelines it can equally help in in doing other interesting things thank you guys for watching the video and please remember like subscribe and share thank you Yeah. <laughs>